Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 103. Day 3103. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 103. Not yesterday, but day before yesterday, on day 101, we begin the topic of probability. Today is our third lesson in the series. I do not know how many how many videos we'll end up making. Or perhaps ten of them, perhaps seven, perhaps five, I don't know. So it's third one in the series of series of uh, the, on the topic of the probability. Today we'll do problem that you see there on the blackboard. Example number 4.4.4, .4 which appears on page number 306. Open the book. It's important that you have the book in front of you so you can read the problem as it appears in the book. But here's the gist of it. We are told that we have an experiment with three different events, A, B, and C. We're given the odds of the three events. The odds that A will happen is 23%. Odds that event B will happen, we are told, is 40%. And the probability that event C will take place, we are told, is 85%. We are further told that A and B are mutually exclusive and B and B and C are independent. We'll worry about what these two mean and how they're going to come into play in a second. Let's first look at the first question. Let's look at the first question. The first question is asking us what are the odds part A is asking us what are the odds that event A or B or both happen. We know, we know from before we have discussed this topic at least at least two or three times. The concept of inclusive, inclusive, exclusive principle. Let me quickly look up as to when was the first time we covered it. I believe on on day number. Day 91. Yes, well, we covered it on day number 91. Day 3091 is the very first time when we covered this topic and we encountered it on page number 300. Inclusive, exclusive principle, as we discussed it before, as we know already, it is there simply to help us avoid double counting. And the double counting only comes into play when two events are likely to happen at the same time, at the same, at the same time, simultaneously. Here we are told that A and B are mutually exclusive. If A and B are mutually exclusive, which simply means that A, if A happens, if A happens, B cannot happen. B cannot happen. And if B happens, A cannot happen. I'm not going to write everything down. If A happens, B cannot happen. If B happens, A cannot happen. They cannot both. They cannot. They cannot both happen at the same time. Well, if they cannot both happen at the same time, then the then the Odd that both A and B happen is zero because we just said it, they cannot both happen at the same time. Therefore, in the inclusive exclusive principle, which goes something like this, inclusive exclusive principle tells us that the odds that both uh, the odds that A or B or both happen is simply the odds that A happens plus the odds of B happens minus whatever it is that you double counted, which is the odds of both A and B happen which in the context of Venn diagram, if they were not mutually exclusive, which they are here, here they are mutually exclusive, but if they were not, the picture would have looked like this. In this area where you see event A happening and event B happening at the same time, we have to subtract it because this area is double counted. We count it first as a part of A and we count the same area as a part of B because it's double counted, we have to take it away. But here we are told that A and B are mutually exclusive a, if A and B are mutually exclusive, which means they cannot both happen at the same time, in the context of Venn diagram, what they are telling us is that these are disjointed sets. They have nothing in common. They do not overlap. 
here's event A, here's event B, they cannot both happen at the same time. Either one happens or the other happens. It's like rolling a dice. It's like rolling a dice and asking ourselves event A being the odds of rolling an even number and event B being the odds of rolling an odd number. Well, in that case, what are the odds that both events happen at the same time? When I roll the dice, what are the odds that I get both an even number and the odd number at the same time? The answer is zero. So this, this part is just zero. And that's the importance of this information. Knowing that A and B are mutually exclusive, that means this is zero. Therefore, the odds that A or B or both happen is simply the odds of A happening, which we were told is 23%. Odds of B happening, which we are told is 40% minus the odds that they will both happen which in this case is zero and therefore in this case in this problem because we're dealing with because we're dealing with disjointed here the answer simply is 63 percent now let's look at second part in the second part in the second part they're asking us what are the odds that b or rather is it b and c yes b and c what are the odds that b or C or both happen. B or C or both happen. Now keep in mind that we are told that B and C are we are done with all of this thing. We are no longer dealing with we are no longer dealing with exclusivity. Here we are told that even B and C are independent event. What does that mean? It simply means that the odds of event B happening has absolutely no influence, no impact on the odds of C happening and vice versa. If you tell me, uh, but here, as we talked about it yesterday, here we're not talking about rolling the dice just once. Here we physically roll the dice twice. We roll the dice twice and we ask ourselves, what, about, what are the odds that I get a three on the first roll and the four on the second roll? Well, my odds of getting a four on the second roll has absolutely nothing to do with the probability of getting a three on the first roll because the dice has no memory. The odds of flipping a coin and asking ourselves, what are the odds that if I flip the coin twice, if I flip a coin twice, what are the odds that I get a head on both tosses? Well, if I get a head on the first toss, the coin is not going to say, well, I'm already head now, better, the second time I better not be head. No, it has no memory. These are two independent events. And if that's the case, if that's the case, which is what we're told here, B and C are independent, if that's the case, then the probability of A, or rather B and C, probability of both B, in this case, this implies that the probability of both B and C happening at the same time is simply the odds of B happening times the odds of C happening. And we have to keep that in mind. This, this information tells us this part. And that we're going to use here in a second because we're going to replace everything here because we're no longer dealing with A and B. We're dealing with B and C. So B and C and B and C. B and C. Same as before, the inclusive exclusive, inclusive exclusive principle does not change. That's still the same. The odds of either B or C or both happening is simply the odds of B happening, odds of C happening, minus the odds of B and C happening. This is the overlapping area. If they overlap, we'll have a value here, which we do here. Because we are not told, in, in the case of B and C, we are not told that they are mutually exclusive, which means they're not. So we have to figure out somehow this value, the odds of B and C happening at the same time. And that is going to come from here, because we are told that they are independent. Do you understand? The odds of B happening is right there, 40%. Odds of C happening, we are told, is 85%. Minus the odds of both of them happening at the same time, which is simply the odds of, the odds of B happening times the odds of C happening. 40 plus 85 is going to be 125 percent minus, and obviously we can't have 125 percent. B times C, what is B? Tell you what, why don't we do it? Why don't we do it in fractions? I don't like this percentage business. I don't know if we should continue or not. Let's see, let's start and let's continue. B times C. B is 40 and this is 85. So 85 times 4 is 20, carry 2. 32 plus 2 is 34. Is 34 percent. Do you understand? 125 minus 25, listen very carefully, 125 minus 25 would have been 100, 125 minus 35 would have been 90, therefore 125 minus 34 would be 91 percent. 91 percent. That's it. And that's all there is. 
that's all there is. And we could have done the same thing as I said in, in terms of fraction if we wanted to. Uh, I don't know if we should try it or not. Let's just leave it here, it's already done. That's it. The answer is 91%. And that's the problem that you see in that, in that, in that example, example 4.4.4, because .4 .4, all they are trying to do is to make sure that you understand the notion of mutual exclusivity and the notion of independent. What does it mean for two events to be independent? What does it mean for two events to be mutually exclusive? If the two events are mutually exclusive, this is a recapitulation, recap. If the two events are mutually exclusive, it simply means that the odds of both of them are happening is zero. This part disappears. If we are not told that they are mutually exclusive, if they are not told that they are mutually exclusive, we cannot assume they are mutually exclusive, in which case we have to figure out what the odds of both of them are happening together. And it's important to know that they are independent, because if they are independent, it is simply the product of the two, uh, two, two events. And that's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.